the thing that brings us all together in this room is that we are all retail revolutionaries. We're all trying to change something. And like Guy said, we've got to work together to do this. And this is my little plea. This is my little, this is how I work. I want to work with you. And I don't know how to change the slide. I'm going to press space bar. So, <laughs> this slide is all about context, right? Because technology without context is like a one-handed clap. It's a bit shit. So, like, everything's changing. We've moved into this new era of, like, in situ digital, the internet of place. And what's very important, with all you startups, whether you're a retailer, whether you're a brand, whether you're a startup, is that you've got to have context. You've got to understand what the medium is. So understanding the medium is key. And then you've got to understand the message and the role of your consumer experience, of, uh, of what you're trying to achieve. And for me, this is quite simple. What I'm trying to achieve through my customer experience, through tech, through uh, working with brands, working with retailers, is ideas that empower people, places, and product. So these are the, like kind of the three P's that I, we kind of start with to make sure that to make sure that we're on track. So when you, we're ideating and thinking about ideas to empower retail through the internet of things today, always refer to those three P's, and it's something that kind of holds true with me. You can see here this is our connected store we built for Thompson, which is a store running in Blue Water. Very cool. If you get a chance, go check it out. That's a little bit of kind of what we do and a little bit of context to 2020, but always return to people, place, and product. The other thing that we always, the other thing that is key is a, a people first approach. So what I'm gonna do here is take you through our people first approach. So at 2020, we kind of believe that digital on one hand is really simple. So it's like, can be really simple. The best digital ideas are really simple. You've got to agree, like solving queuing or something that's really simple, but logistically, it could be a nightmare. Like I said, there's this massive chasm that is very hard to fill. So it's this dichotomy between the simple and the massively complex. But what we try and do when we work together is we try and break it down into for really easy key steps to understand. I'm gonna divulge into these steps with you and hopefully take you on this journey with me. So the first one is why, which is kind of like what we've been doing here. We've been looking at what's changing, why we should act. The other one is what you should do. Like what, what can we do about this? We're gonna be ideating around that later, but keep it simple chaps. Like let's not throw too many buzzwords here, start talking about KPIs, S use or any acronyms let's keep this human who so this is comes into the collaboration like you could have an idea and you go talk to someone and then it iterates and your ideas change so the what and the who iterates and then the how so this is all about like I said this massive chasm of uh, massive chasm of logistics that we need to get around and we'll get around it by working together and aligning so you can see how the who and the how iterate. This iterative process is something that we'll probably experience today when we're coming up with our ideas. The fact that why we're doing it will influence what, and then when we're exploring what, we might think of other ideas about the opportunities and the whys. So keep it simple, keep it human. So first step, diving into why together, okay? Why? Because, like we said before, there's opportunity to find magic in the mundane to find extraordinary in the everyday. So, like I said, queuing, it's a ball ache. But through digital consumer experience, through IoT, through new technology, through technology with context, we can reinvent this. We can create opportunity. And it's looking at these, looking at these everyday customer behaviors like we've been doing this morning. And it's about finding the opportunities. And I bet you've all got so many opportunities that you could talk about. So many times you walk down the high street and you've got frustrations. So what, what we'd do is we'd explore these. So we'd look at turning these ordinary 
everyday mundane activities into the extraordinary. And that is something that, that we'll probably do today, but uh, it's something that you should, it would be a great way to start. So this is stage one, why? And I've kind of got some little starters here. So you guys have, you've got your trends and you've got your whys and your customer behaviors. I've got a, little, a few little pointers here that you can listen to or you can just, I'm not going to listen to you. But you have to define value, which is key. So for example, uh, product details, demos, and reviews. Like whenever you go into store, this could all improve the customer experience. Access. So there's quite, like, there's quite a lot of opportunity to uh, extend the long tail, to look at ways you can deliver more information. So I always think, is it, is, it, is it helping these key, is it helping these key needs? So what, I, what I'm trying to explore here is the high street is a very noisy place. Like you walk down the high street, there's lots of people shouting. This tech revolution that we're embarking on together today has an opportunity to add to that noise. We don't want to do that. No more noise, people. No. Shh. What we need is needs. And I've kind of spitballed some here, but I'm sure you can all think of your own. So value, pow. Access, the long tail. Engagement. I mean, we're all talking at like, I'm going to keep referring, we're all talking about what does success look like. What is success? What are we all striving for? And is it engagement? Do we, want to, do we want people to spend more time in our retail outlets, with our brands, with our spaces, with our product? And then there's also inspire. Do we want to inspire people? I don't know the KPI or how to measure inspiration, but with the Internet of Things, there's so many more sexy metrics that we can play with, and maybe we can start measuring inspiration. So key learning from this, chaps, and chapesses, N Shh. No, 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 don't add more noise. But yes to needs. So define your needs. So look for the extraordinary and the everyday. Find your needs. Define your needs. Don't create more noise. Create a need. Solve a need. Supply a need. So next, what? So. This is the next step that we're all going to be going on together in a few minutes, which is looking at, looking at what we can do about it, coming into ideas. There's been great ideas passed around this morning and great things that people are doing, that people are constantly having ideas. But what I've got written here, which is credible and incredible, like I spoke to before, the idea of being able to find new metrics, being able to measure, making sure things are accountable. When we're coming up with our ideas together, make sure they're credible so think about the metrics that you can measure. So if it is engagement, will it be downtime if it's ROI? Look at, look at all these new metrics. Invent a metric, but make sure it's credible because what people really want from this retail future is accountability and credibility. But like tech without concept, context, like tech without, con I'm getting carried away. Like tech without context, you need the credible and you also need the incredible. Like, at heart, I'm a designer. And it's got to be beautiful. It's got to be inspiring. The retail landscape has got to be beautiful. It's got to be inspiring. It can't just be accountable. It's got to be accountable and daring, accountably daring, measurably daring, credibly incredible. It's got to be these things. And when you're thinking of your concepts, I like this dichotomy. And I. A lot of people have been speaking to me today, and they've got startups, and they are applicable to this. And it's just something that's really exciting in this space. And it's something that's quite new to retail, and it's quite new to customer experience. So we've got why. Shh. Don't make noise. Supply and need. Why? Because there's needs. When there's needs, supply and demand, isn't it? There's what, which is look for metrics, measure it, create the credible and credible together. And then what's next? Why are you all are here? Nope. OK, this is a bit more hard sell. So this is going into the fact that I'm a designer. I'm also digital. I come from a background of mobile. So I'm very much about integrated design and looking at, uh, looking about, looking at the merger of physical and digital space. But I'm not going to go into this because I'm on a roll with these, uh, with these four key points. So, next slide. 
the relationship between design and digital. There's a really lovely poster there that says, I can't read it from this angle, but it's really good. <laughs> but in essence, <laughs> but in essence, it's like the marriage between science and art. Design and digital go really well hand to hand. I'm a digital art director and uh, I fucking love it. It's awesome. Like I get to play with like metrics and I get to play with design and it's what we love doing. So if you love doing that, come speak to me because we can do it together. And then that goes on to the next, which is who. So like, like I said, we can't do this alone. This ecosystem, this network has to get more structured and there needs to be, there needs to be a higher, higher calling to digital customer experience and we need to work together and we need to become natural born collaborators. So I spend a lot of my time meeting amazing people like you. It's such an awesome place to be and these revolutionaries need to work together to spark this revolution. And I think it's just interesting the way you meet people and the who iterates on the what. Because you meet someone and they've got this gadget and it can connect to the gadget that you're building on, it completely reinvents it. And this iterative process of matching the who with the what is something that we really enjoy. And you end up in places you never thought you'd be. And it helps you create the credible incredible. And it's, it's building this network, which is what Catapult is so brilliant at doing. And it's that iterative process that I think that we all need to get involved with. So who? And then finally, the chasm. How? So turning your ambition into action. Logistics, implementation, iteration, scale, digital consumer experience. Will it happen in the alleys of Liverpool or the heart of London or in a barge in Amsterdam? Logistically, it can't happen without the who. So the how doesn't happen without the who, doesn't happen without the what, doesn't happen without the why. And it's these iterative process that I want to go on with you guys and I want to take brands, I want to take the high street on, because I think this is the way we'll, this is the way we'll trigger this revolution and this is the way we'll bring all of these ideas that we keep having, these concepts, and we'll turn all of this, we've all got a lot of ambition, let's turn that into action. So, I'll iterate on the iterations. So, step one, find extraordinary in the everyday. Step two, Create the credible, incredible. Step three, become natural born collaborators. And then the final step will leap forward into a new dawn of retail revolution is turn your ambition into action. So that is all underpinned by empowering people, places, and products. Because we're all people. We all, products can bring joy to people. And we all, we've got to live here, guys. Like this is our place, this is our, this is our high street. So uh, yeah, I'm Jack and I'll be around. And if you wanna chat about being a retail revolutionary and empowering people, places and product, then uh, I'm all ears.